The male honeybee, otherwise known as the drone, is only alive for one purpose, to have sex with the queen bee. The drones don't have stingers and they don't gather nectar like the other bees. The drone's main function is to be ready to fertilize a receptive queen. Once mating season begins, the queen flies through the air and drones surround her, trying to be the first lucky fellow to get some of that virgin tail. These drones are some agile little buggers because they have to do the nasty in midair. Once they get a hold of the queen from behind, they perform one of the most dramatic examples of sexual suicide in the insect world. The drone turns his penis inside out and thrusts forward. This act paralyzes the drone, causing him to flip backwards. He ejaculates with such explosive force that the tip of his penis ruptures and is left behind inside the queen. The force is often audible to the human ear, kind of like a popping sound. After mating with about seven to 12 drones, the female will store the shattered shafts inside of her abdomen for the rest of her life, using the semen to fertilize her eggs. The process only takes one to two seconds on average, and the drone falls to the ground and dies soon after. What a buzz kill. The gnarly tooth lure bobbing deep sea angler fish is probably one of the ugliest creatures on the planet, but that doesn't matter to the males of the species. They love them for what's on the inside, literally. When it's time to find a mate, the males follow a pheromone released by the female. She will often aid their search further by flashing her bioluminescent lure. Once he finds her, he bites into her belly and latches on until his body fuses with hers. Their skin and blood vessels join together allowing the male to extract the nutrients he needs. And you thought your boyfriend was clingy. The male essentially becomes a parasite of the female and injects his sperm into her through a process called parabiotic reproduction. With his mouth firmly clamped into the side of the female, who needs to swim, hunt, or even see? Not this guy. So his eyes, fins, and some internal organs start to degenerate and slowly wither away over time. Eventually, he becomes a lump of flesh hanging from the female, providing sperm whenever she's ready to spawn. If you think about it, the male angler fish provides the female with her own personal nutsack. When it comes to the giraffe courtship rituals, things get a bit gross. Or kinky, depends on what you're into. When the male is ready to mate, which is every day, year round, he bumps and rubs the butt of the female, trying to get her to pee. When and if she does urinate, he goes in for a slurp and gulps up a mouthful of tinkle. He can assess her fertility by tasting the urine to detect ostrus in a multi-step process known as the Fleming response. In layman's terms, he wants to see if she's in heat, so he scoops up the pee in his mouth to savor its flavor. If the urine tastes good enough to drink, then he knows she's ready for some action. But you know she's got to play hard to get, so she trots away. She does this to entice other males in the area to fight for her, ensuring she gets the best possible candidate. Once she gets too tired of running away, she stands still, getting ready for that magic moment. And it really is a moment. Copulation is brief, lasting only a few seconds. If fighting does occur between two male giraffes, they will more than likely have sex with each other afterward. Multiple studies have shown that male giraffes participate in homosexual activity way more frequently than male and female relations. All whiptail lizards are lesbian clones. Let me explain. All members of this species, known as the New Mexico Whiptail, are in fact female. They have the ability to lay eggs that hatch and grow into healthy lizards without needing to be fertilized by a male. The offspring are exact and complete genetic duplicates of the mothers. Basically, they're cloning themselves. They also take turns role-playing. By that, I mean they pretend to hump each other. One lizard gets behind the other and simulates a rocking motion, and this causes the lizard acting as the female to ovulate. And lay her eggs. Then a few weeks later, the two lizards switch roles and repeat this process so that the second female will be able to ovulate and lay her eggs. Reproduction occurs through parthenogenesis, which in Greek means virgin birth. These strong independent lizards don't need no man.
Have you ever wondered how porcupines get it on? Well, other than trying to avoid all those sharp quills, the process leading up to copulation is very bizarre. They engage in a little bit of foreplay. If the female gets enough Eskimo kisses, she's ready for the next step. The male only has a small window to make an impression, because female North American porcupines are only fertile once a year, for a period of 8 to 12 hours. As a matter of fact, they are so sexually inactive that the vagina is usually closed with a membrane. So the male jumps into action by peeing all over her body. Sometimes he'll climb up to a low branch and urinate on her from above, a literal golden shower. If she doesn't like his torrential downpour of piss, she will shake it off and move on to the next mate. If the stream is strong enough, she will let it drench her entire body. Then she will present her soft underbelly by curving her tail over her back so that her quills don't impale the male. If she's done but the male is still trying to get some, in rare cases she'll swipe her tail and poke his little pecker with quills. That's what I call sticking it to the man.